Hi friends, welcome back to our channel. Today we are giving you our best round top tips for the most successful trip to round top. If you are new around here and haven't seen our other videos, we recently went to Round Top Antique Show and vlogged the whole thing. We also filmed a video of us um, sharing with you all the treasures we brought back from Round Top, so make sure to check those out. But today is all about giving you our best tips so that you have the best, the most successful trip you can. And also we're gonna be doing a little Q&A at the end, answering questions you asked us on our Instagram. Um, if you don't already follow us, at Shop Tazuri. That'll be at the end of the video for a couple minutes. Let's just jump right in. I'm first gonna lay out the different areas at Round Top and I'm gonna give you an idea of what prices to expect, what pieces to expect, the overall vibe of the shops. Um, so yeah, you are going to find the best deals at the fields. Basically, the fields is just a really big field full of a bunch of tents where all these different vendors are set up. So basically, it's a lot of digging, um, but you are going to find things for a better price here. If you are traveling from out of state to come to Round Top, I would suggest personally that you would skip the fields, especially if you're only there for a few days because there is so much to see at Round Top, and even if you spend six days like we did, you will not see everything there is. Next up, we have XS1 and XS2. We loved the XS's. XS2 specifically had a lot of Italian and French vendors, which we loved. That's our like vibe. They also had a lot of mid-century, some Swedish. It was really, it was a really cool mix. Prices here vary greatly. To give you a better idea, there was this wonderful French vendor, Pascal Jones Antiques, one of our favorites. She was selling vintage French chandeliers between 400 and 500 a piece. There was also a vendor there selling Willie Gould chairs for like 13,500 a piece. All right, moving on to Blue Hills. Blue Hills was our favorite spot. We got there, we were there for opening day, and it was amazing. Our favorite shop in Blue Hills um, was called Antiquaire de France. I, I really should look up how to say Antiquaire because I said it in another video and I, I'm saying it like it's a town, like Antiquaire, and it's definitely not. Moving on. There were so many French antiques here. Like, it was like France threw up on Blue Hills, but like beautiful throw up that looks and smells delicious. <laughs> That is so gross. Anyways, prices here, again, they vary greatly. We went to Antiquaire de France and he had this gorgeous 18th century verdure tapestry that was massive. It filled like an entire wall, like it was huge. Um, and he was selling it for $8,900. And that was a good price for this like large piece. And then you go to the compound, which we'll talk about in a bit, just down the road, and there was another one of these tapestries, very similar in color, pattern, and size, being sold for 29,000. So, the prices vary. There was also a really good food truck at Blue Hills called Tumbleweed Co. Get the pesto grilled cheese and the cheesy potatoes. So good. All right, next we're gonna talk about the compound, which is not far from Blue Hills. You drive down like about two or three minutes or so. Some of my favorite shops here were Jardin de France, which if you are facing the compound from the parking lot, Jardin de France is in the back right corner. The first time I missed it, I only found it because a friend of ours told us we had to go. So you really kind of have to go off the beaten path. Make sure you don't miss it because that was one of my favorite shops. Another favorite here was Enneby Home. Enneby Home, make sure you follow them on Instagram. They have gorgeous pieces. It's mid-century modern, so not like our bread and butter, but we loved the pieces they chose there. Also, the setup was so fun. They had a really fun courtyard, just like really quality pieces. Prices here are very similar to Blue Hills, so they vary greatly. We found these beautiful alabaster grape clusters on like real, grapevines from Italy. Um, they were selling for 400 something for like the bigger ones. I think 200 something for the smaller ones. You're not like walking away feeling like, wow, that was a steal. Like, I don't think you'll ever feel that way at Round Top unless you're shopping at the fields. What's next? 
Oh, Market Hill. So Market Hill is like the most high end it gets, I would say from my experience. To give you an idea, people from Market Hill will shop at XS1 and XS2 for their pieces and then bring them to their shops and resell them. We didn't spend a ton of time here just because it was so expensive, but it's fun to just visit. And if you're shopping for a client, if you're a designer, it's definitely worth looking into. There's a ton of gorgeous pieces there. Now, there are a few other places at Round Top that we did not hit. First of all, there were the Arbors, which were open when we were there. And I don't know if I just like drove past and didn't, didn't realize it was there. Missed the Arbors, so but it looks amazing. So definitely check that out. Also, we came at the beginning of the season. So Marburger wasn't open yet and the Big Red Barn wasn't open yet. Next season, maybe we will be able to be there for those, um, but this time around we weren't. So <laughs> check out another YouTube video if you're wondering about those. All that being said, us going in the beginning of the season, there were some pros and cons. Pros were people were still setting up so we could like just sift through things before it wasn't really picked over at all. Um, so it was fun to be able to get first dibs on pieces. It also was like really calm and peaceful. I've heard that Round Top can be really like crazy and you have to get there early and parking can be insane. And, but we did not experience that. The cons of going early are that you're, you might miss some shows and this is like the beginning of the show. So if you were going to the, towards the end, you could get better prices for things because vendors really want to get things moving. They don't want to have to pack things back up. Another tip is about weather. Andrew and I went to Texas fully preparing for like summer weather, 80s, 70s, 80s, sunny, like I brought my bathing suit. It was like cold. Make sure to check the weather and just prepare accordingly. Bring a few things. I had to wear like literally the same outfit every day and just wash it every, not every night. <laughs> I'm not like crazy. I would change my undergarments, but I mean like my jeans. Anyways. So yeah, prepare. Also make sure you can bring shoes that can get dirty because you're gonna be walking in the mud, in the dirt, on gravel roads, and you don't wanna bring like your best shoes. Okay, really important tip, bring cash or checks. You will save a lot of money in doing so, if you, especially if you're buying a lot. Um, if you're paying with credit card, there's usually around a 3% like credit card fee. So if you're spending a couple thousand dollars on a piece of furniture, that's going to save you like a few hundred dollars. Also, if you are in the trade, make sure you have your tax ID number. Some of these shops offer amazing discounts for people in the trade. Like I'm talking like 20% off because you're in the field and they want your business over and over again. So just make sure to ask, like literally every time I asked if they could go down, they always went down on the price. Another tip is to get to know the vendors because there are such amazing people there that come from all over the world. Like they travel here from France and Italy and Sweden and England and all the places. And so just get to know them because that's like our favorite thing about what we do is like the people we get to meet and just the stories we hear. Okay, random side tip, go to gar to the garden company and get the Brussels sprouts. I, I don't even like Brussels sprouts, but get the Brussels sprouts. Oh my gosh, the food here is so good. I just wanna say before we jump into the Q&A section where you guys ask us your questions, this, if you're a designer, like you need to go to Round Top because the stuff you find here, I feel like, say you have like five clients' homes that you're working on for the year and you have specific pieces and measurements and all these things, like you can find it all here. I'm convinced of it. I would say if you're just like wanting to go and experience it, make the trip out. You could probably find cheap flights to Texas if you're not in Texas and just go and experience it because you are going to leave so inspired. Like I left so inspired and I feel like that was the greatest gift that Round Top gave me. And if you live in Texas and you haven't been to Round Top, like shame on you. <laughs> not actually, but like go. What are you waiting for? It's like a gold mine. All right, that's all. All right, let us jump in to your questions. How can a shopper plan for success at the fair? I think I gave you enough to answer that question. Main tip, bring cash and checks. 
What was your favorite shop? What was the most unexpected thing about Round Top? My favorite shop was Anticarie de France at Blue Hills. Also, I loved Pascal Jones Antiques at Excess 2 and Jardin de France at The Compound. But I will say my number one was Anticarie de France. I think the most unexpected thing about Round Top for us were like the dreams and thoughts and plans that came up for our personal business just from being there, like the inspiration and which direction we want to take our business in. So yeah, I think I, I was pleasantly surprised by the dreams that were born out of Round Top for us. Also like Round Top, the town is like, there's nothing, there is nothing around there. How, like it's crazy to me that this the most the largest antique show in North America is in this tiny town that literally like has 87 people living in it. No joke. There's a sign that says like population of 87. Blows my mind. Why does Andrew always seem so negative and mean? Guess who asked that question? Andrew. <laughs> Were the vendors open to negotiating prices or did that feel inappropriate in that setting? I kind of answered this already, but yes, they were open to negotiating. I found that when they give you a price, like, and you're saying like, what's the best price you can give me? They are giving you their best price. You trying to work them down even more is like, like they're pretty like straightforward and to the point like, all right, I, the best I can do is 400 on this. And they kind of like stick to that. Did you get anything for yourself like your TV stand? Aw, you guys, if you've been following on Instagram, you know that I am on the hunt for a TV stand that's not an actual TV stand, a piece to act as a TV stand. Anyways, didn't find my TV stand. I think I'm gonna DIY it and make a video out of it because I have a specific vision in mind, but we did find some pieces for ourselves. Actually, I think I only kept one piece. I'll and I'll, I'll show you which piece I kept. Dun, 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 dun. This is the piece that I decided to keep. I found this on the last day at Pascal Jones Antiques. She is beautiful. The colors are insane. It's signed 1945, an original oil painting from France. I will say I do regret not buying. Oh my gosh, I literally want to kick myself in the butt. Ugh. I regret not buying this gorgeous French chandelier from Exus 2. Did you get less or more than you were hoping slash expecting? Hmm. I wouldn't say I got more or less. I think maybe I got a little less than I was expecting, to be honest. No, but you know what? Then again, I brought back less, but we were able to like ship you guys stuff while we're there because our movers, the the shippers that we work with, they come to Roundtop, so we didn't necessarily bring everything that we sold. So I feel like it was exactly kind of what I expected. Sorry, that was like the longest way to explain the answer to that question. Were you disappointed by the prices or prepared for the high prices? Kind of answered that. Yeah, I think I was the first day a little bit disappointed with prices, just because I was expecting like excess one and excess two to have better prices than they did. But at, over the course of the trip, I think I realized even more like the value of these things too and what they should be priced at. So yes and no. Sorry, that's not a fun answer, but that's my answer. People were asking how I we brought stuff back and we drove down. We road trip down to Texas and then we um, drove everything back up in our Jeep. If you're planning to go to Round Top and you're not driving, you're flying in, you, first of all, if you're going for like little trinket things, you should definitely just bring a big empty, empty suitcase and like pack it between your clothes and bring it back. That's how we ship things when we went to Sicily and brought things back. We literally just packed it all around our clothes and our suitcases and everything arrived safely. And also if you find bigger pieces that you want, there are shippers on site that like at the different vendors that you can work with to ship your pieces back to wherever you are. Again, that's gonna add some money um, because shipping isn't cheap, but that's an option. Okay, you guys, I hope that this video was helpful for you. I hope it better prepares you for your trip to Round Top. If you have any other questions, please let us know in the comments and we will answer them for you. We had such an amazing time and highly encourage anyone who can go to Round Top, just go even 
if for if for the experience itself. It is so fun. Stay tuned for our next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Love you guys. Thanks so much for watching.